everybody. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for coming out. I'm super excited everyone's here. It's been a pretty exciting last few months for SDF. We've essentially doubled in size. Uh, we got a new executive director. There's a lot of stuff we're working on, both the technical front and, and the partnership front. So it should be a pretty good year for us. And again, like super excited you guys are here. I'm sorry I didn't prepare any kind of presentation. So we're just going to do a QA. and a And we're going to start off with some questions that were submitted by our online community. And then we're going to open it up for you guys. Since becoming CTO, how has that improved your ability to focus more on developing the Stellar platform? Um, yeah, I, I do have a different role now. Um, I, I'm not CTO. I, I guess I'm calling myself Chief, Chief Architect. Uh, essentially, we got Danelle Dixon, who is the former COO of Mozilla, to come be the executive director and kind of take over a lot of the business side stuff and do a, sort of, a lot of stuff that we weren't doing before. For instance, we're going to start doing a lot of more like policy outreach, things like this that we just weren't addressing before, which is super important for us to do. Um, and my role will be more on the architecture side, making sure the protocol keeps kind of progressing and being developed in, in a good way. Um, and yeah, so if, from my point of view, it's great because that's actually what I want to be doing and I'm better at. So it should be good all in all. What do you see as the biggest roadblock for Stellar to become mainstream? Um, so it, it's, it's sort of the same roadblock that all crypto projects have, is that they all depend really heavily on network effects. And so actually building that network is the biggest challenge. Um, and I think that's why crypto has actually been slow to be useful out in the world. I mean, a lot of people like it, but like it's not actually being used that widely, and it's because the network hasn't been developed yet. Uh, and we've got some ways that we think will solve this problem, and we're kind of putting them into place over this year. and so. Hopefully, we'll basically like be able to break this like network barrier and have it become useful. So. All right. The third question I have here is about WorldWire, which we were really, really excited to talk about this year. Um, and the question is, what kind of initial feedback have you received since the WorldWire launch in March? Uh, yeah. So WorldWire is obviously pretty exciting. We've we've had lots of people approach us and and mainly IBM about wanting to get on the WorldWire platform. Uh, you know, we're super excited to have that become live, uh, and we're working with them to, to to make that a reality. Switching gears a little bit, can you talk about some of the changes to the protocol coming in version 11? Uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, protocol 11 has a lot of. Uh, you know, bug fixes and like, like minor things. The major, the major things that it does is it changes the way fees are handled. Right now you have to specify the exact fee you want to pay for a transaction. And now you can specify the max fee you're going to pay. And so if the network is under load, your transaction will still go through without having to kind of guess what the load will be at that particular instant. And so it, it seems kind of technical, but it matters for, you know, wallet developers or people actually using the software because now they can just set a, a, or even like smart contract developers because now in the future, they don't have to worry about what the fee is. They can just set it to something high and then they're going to pay the lowest possible rate when the transaction actually goes through the network. So it's, it's, it sounds kind of esoteric, but it's actually pretty important for like growth of the network. Uh, coupled with that was uh, it, we also changed the way um, the the max the limits in Stellar work before it was per transaction and now the limits are per operation and basically the distinction is a transaction can have multiple operations uh, and uh, that that's kind of what it is right so basically the limit is now per operation so you don't have to like guess because most transactions just have one operation whereas but you have to worry that some some transactions would have like hundred. Anyway, but it's going to make it where it's just a little more efficient to actually like send things through the network. Has, uh, has the Stellar Development Foundation given additional thoughts on inflation and what you see as next steps? Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, from my point of view, I mean, I think there's different views within SDF of what we should like, how inflation should be handled in the network. Uh, my personal view is that it, inflation is cool, but it's ultimately more complicated than what it's worth, like what it's kind of providing for the network. So I'd like to see it kind of deprecated and we just move to this non-inflationary world. I think there's a kind of broad support in the community for that. I mean, I know there's a few projects that are depending on inflation, uh, but I think in general, people are supportive of that view. So it'd be cool if like somebody kind of took the took it upon themselves to like write the actual cap, which is how these protocol changes go. And if somebody actually goes and writes that, then I think we could kind of get it pushed through. So. Great. Well, that concludes the online question and answer session. And we'd love to have you guys, um, again, we have a mic right up here. So if you have any questions, please get in line. Hi. Um, my name is uh, Filippo Jacob. I'm from Pigsby. And we've developed our technology on Stutter as well. So what sort of uh, industries uh, do you see will help uh, Stella um, 
uh, become a mainstream uh, or, or bring mainstream uh, usage uh, to the network? Yeah, I mean, uh, so Stellar is a pretty general platform. Really, it's just a distributed database, so you can do lots and lots of things with it. Uh, so I don't know what thing will ultimately make it mainstream. I think our our view is that it's the uh, the the most obvious problem or the most painful problem that like blockchain type things solve is is cross border payments. So we're definitely very focused there, but we're supportive of people like trying to do other things on it. You know, there's all kinds of other initiatives like you know tokenizing real estate or like you know issuing other kinds of things into the network or using it for like uh, IoT kind of stuff. Like people are doing all kinds of stuff that's not squarely what SDF is focused on. Uh, most of our effort goes into like this cross border payment use case where we really think that you know, moving money between a lot of, particularly like developing countries is, is really cumbersome now and, and there's a lot of room for improvement and I think Stellar is a big part of the solution there, so. So Ernest from uh, FinTech Limited. So my question is, um, are there any plans in the evolutionary trajectory of the protocol to be able to support, like maybe leaving the inflation option and diverting that to like something like what we have with Dash, with uh, master nodes, where there's an incentive for third-party users to be able to integrate to the Stellar blockchain, but at the same time have an incentive to build out the nodes because I'm concerned about the nodes we have, and I feel that to protect the network, we need to increase this. So is there anything in the horizon, <laughs> you know, uh, if I use that word, uh, to be able to support, like transfer these incentives over to people who run sort of these independent nodes to protect the network and scale it? Yeah, I mean, people have proposed this. The, the, the issue is it's very hard on a protocol level to tell who those people are. I mean, this is what the original inflation mechanism was kind of designed to do. It allowed people to kind of vote for these things. So like if you thought someone was particularly helpful for the ecosystem, you could point your inflation there. But in practice, I mean, this happens only in a couple cases. I mean, I think the lobster wallet gets inflation pointed there, and there's a few other things that get it. But, but for the most part, people just join these inflation pools and just get it back to themselves. So I, I don't know of a way that you could do it, because the protocol doesn't know if you're a mass, or if you're a node or like a proper validator. Like it, it doesn't know these things from the protocol level, so it has to be someone outside the system determining this. And it just doesn't seem in practice that people are actually doing this properly. I think we need to just do other things to like get people to run validators. And a lot of it is just education, frankly. I think it's not really, you know, if you're a business that's using Stellar, it's not a big ask to run a Stellar validator. We just need to like explain it to people better and like show them how to do it, which we're working on now, so. Uh, as it stands, uh, how will the native XLM token participate in WorldWire? And if any, uh, how do you anticipate any sort of price fluctuation from its participation? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the current model that I've seen is that between the financial institutions, the actual settlement can be done uh, on lumens, right? So, uh, or, or, or in some cases, some fiat token, right? So, uh, so it's like lumens are actually used like in the loop of the transactions. So, I mean, we think that that's cool because it's like making, providing extra liquidity for lumens and like lots of other contexts could potentially be used. Um, but yeah, in terms of what that'll do for the price, no idea. But, with WorldWire, is your plan to take more, if I, if I look at Ripple, for example, right? So Ripple has X current and X rapid, right? So in one, they're not using XRP, and it's basically just ledgers getting updated across the banks, so Nostro accounts and so on. So is that what WorldWire is doing, or is it more use crypto to actually transfer, to do the cross-border conversion, meaning use crypto exchanges to do it? Uh, it, it's not using crypto exchanges, but it, but it uh, it is using the public network. So it, it isn't like a separate network or anything like that. So it's using the public Stellar network, and uh, it, it's you know they're still parts of it are still being developed. I'm pushing them to use the actual Stellar Dex as the, for the way that they're doing the currency conversion. Right now they're doing it internally, uh, but it's still the value is moving across the public network. So, so it, it is public network, but but. Uh, Clearly, the, uh, the currency translation is happening in the regular way. Like with Ripple also, if I look at it, it's not like XRP is being used for tr uh, translating the currency, right? It's really for updating the ledgers on both the sides. 
Um, yeah, I don't know how the Ripple model works. Uh, it, at least in WorldWire, it, it is like it like it goes from like some fiat token to Lumens, from Lumens to some other fiat token. So okay. like that so that is, transaction. So Lumens does is there in between. Yeah. So going back again to the uh, protocol, given the exponential growth of Stellar, as we are seeing, a lot of tokens are. I think we are about forty-seven hundred. I'm climbing right now, and I expect it to continue to grow exponentially. How are we planning, or are you planning with the uh, protocol to handle this load? Because we, we, I mean, the transactions we can handle per second are quite significant compared to the other blockchains. But is it, are we going to like enforce a system where the nodes need to run like SSDs or faster CPUs and all of that to make sure that we can get more transactions through the pipe? Or do we just wait and see what happens? How are you, is, there, is there any long-term planning for this? Because I'm watching the growth and it's, it's uh, getting pretty crazy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, th this is the main thing the core team is focused on now is, is how we handle growth, right? Um, and uh, there's actually one of the things that was also in Protocol 11 is, is doing just that. It's like actually much more efficient than before. There's, there's some changes that make it uh, be able to scale much better. So we're working on that dimension where we're like making the actual software just be able to handle more load. Uh, and then we're also working on uh, Starlight, which is kind of the payment channel um, system. Uh, and, and basically that uh, a Starlight implementation will make it be able to handle much, much, much greater load, right? So there's that. And then like even longer term, we're, we, we just released a, a blog about ZKVM, which is maybe a potential like way to migrate a lot of the transactions off the, the main Stellar network to this like kind of side chain situation. So um, it's something that we're, the, the, again, like that's basically what the, all the core team does is like figure out how to scale this thing once it does get much more adopted. So, yeah. My question for you, Jed, is, I mean, this is your baby. This is what you've created um, many years ago. You've been involved in many projects. So to kind of see, uh, I'm curious from your perspective, there's a lot of projects that are happening right now, things are being built on it. Which one in particular, is there anything in particular out there that excites you the most to see being implemented on your platform? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to pick a favorite. Sure, but, but lot if you of, could, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of super interesting things. And like the, over the last year, it's been great to see like the level of quality and like the, what's being built on the platform has just like gone up dramatically. So right. I, I'm just I'm just super excited. And like most of the people here are like building stuff on Stellar, which is super awesome. Uh, so, you know, it's just great to see, like not just me, for everyone on the team sees like the energy and the ecosystem is just increasing. And it, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome, man, yeah. thanks. Well, hey, again, thank you guys so much for coming tonight. I know there are a lot of events going on, so thank you so much for being here.